Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Book Summary of The Art of Work by Jeff Goins The three things that give life meaning, according to Viktor Frankl, are the following, a project, a significant relationship, and a redemptive perspective on suffering. If we want true happiness in our lives, we must rise above the petty desires of our own hearts and do what is required of us by our circumstances. Clarity can only be achieved through action. It is when you look back on your life and realize what it has been trying to teach you that you have discovered your calling. When most people are young, they spend their best years of their lives waiting for an opportunity to present itself rather than going out and seeking one. The affirming voice that tells you what you already know to be true but still need to hear can be all that you need to make a difficult decision. Whatever one's natural talent or lack thereof, every individual has the ability to improve themselves, says the author. According to the Portfolio Life concept, instead of viewing your work as a single, undifferentiated activity, what if you saw it as the diverse collection of interests, passions and activities that it truly is? I believe that, if we begin to see our difficulties as opportunities, each of us has the ability to transform our lives into significant stories. A project, a significant relationship, and a redemptive view of suffering are the three things that give meaning to one's life, according to, Viktor Frankl Research. S. What we all want is to know that our time on this planet has been productive. We can only keep ourselves entertained for a limited period of time before we begin to wonder what the point of it all is. The implication of this is that if we want true satisfaction, we must rise above the trivialities of our own desires and do what is required of us. When we embrace the pain rather than avoid it, we are called to our calling. There comes a point in every great narrative when the character must decide whether or not to become more than a bystander. When most people are young, They spend their best years of their lives waiting for an opportunity to present itself rather than going out and seeking one. And they learned an important lesson, just as you might have, which is that clarity comes with action. It is when you look back on your life and realize what it has been trying to teach you that you have discovered your calling. A vocation, on the other hand, is not like that. You don't become someone by trying to be someone else. You become someone by becoming yourself. Every single event in your life has served to prepare you for a moment that is yet to come unknown. The affirming voice that tells you what you already know to be true but still need to hear can be all that you need to make a difficult decision. The worst way to find a mentor is to go out and look for one. The most effective method is to observe the one that is already present. Whatever one's natural talent or lack thereof, every individual has the ability to improve themselves, says the author. Any great discovery, especially one that is the culmination of a lifetime's work, is never made in a single moment. Actually, Epiphany is a process that occurs in stages, it is an evolutionary process. First and foremost, you hear the call. It may sound different to each individual, but it is universally applicable. Humility is a precondition for experiencing epiphany. Second, you respond to my question. Words alone will not suffice, you must take action. Third, you start to believe in yourself. In order to achieve your goals, it is more important to follow a path than it is to reach a specific destination. Every calling is accompanied by a period of insignificance, a period during which nothing appears to make sense. During this period, you will feel alone and misunderstood as if you are wandering through the wilderness. According to the outsider, such a period appears to be a failure, you appear to be grasping at air or simply wasting time. Nevertheless, the reality is that this is the most important experience that a person can have if they take advantage of it. According to the portfolio life concept, instead of viewing your work as a single, undifferentiated activity, What if you saw it as the diverse collection of interests, passions and activities that it truly is? In addition, what if, instead of identifying with a job description, you began to see the entire mass of things you do as a single portfolio of activity? In his book The Age of Unreason, Charles Handy introduced the concept of a rational society. Handy outlines five different types of work that should be included in your portfolio in the book. There are several types of work, fee work, salary work, homework, study work, and gift work. In terms of compensation, fee and salary work are the only types of paid work available, and they are both self-explanatory, fee work is the exchange of hours for dollars, and a salary is a fixed income determined by a job description. In the context of homework, work that you do at home includes things like mowing the lawn and spending time with your family. Study work is any intentional education that will benefit you in any future work you do, such as reading a book or enrolling in a vocational class. And gift work is any volunteer experience you might have 
such as giving your time to a local homeless shelter or even taking someone out to lunch to provide them with useful career advice, explains the author. Portfolio people, as Handy calls them, are encouraged to organize their time not in terms of hours in a week, but in terms of days in a year, says Handy. Suppose you require $50,000 per year in income and can find a way to earn $250 per day, you will only need to work 200 days per year to meet your financial goals. It is possible to spend the remaining 165 days working on the rest of your portfolio. Your work is not a support system for your life, your life is a support system for your work, says the author. Listed below are three excellent takeaways from the art of work. 1. Make a list of all of the significant events in your life to help you discover your calling. 2. There is no such thing as self-made in the world of business. 3. Don't get too worked up about it, live a portfolio life. Lesson 1. Begin by compiling a list of significant events from your life to help you discover your true calling. Jeff doesn't mince words when it comes to his opinions. Finding one's life's purpose is not an easy task. If it were, everyone would do it, and we wouldn't have to think about the sobering fact that only 13% of all people around the world enjoy going to work. However, he immediately provides you with some excellent starting points. First and foremost, it is a matter of awareness, specifically self-awareness, that is essential. It is possible that you will miss your life's calling even if it is right in front of you if you do not know yourself well enough. Our true purpose frequently comes to us in the form of a strong gut feeling or during a significant event in our lives, such as a life-changing event such as a turning point. Think of it as a cross between Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's how he discovered he had to train to become a Jedi. Jeff recommends that you begin by making a simple list of all of the significant events in your life. It should be noted, however, that major does not imply importance. Yes, the day you started high school should be included, as should graduation and possibly your first kiss, but some events may appear to be completely unrelated, even if you believe they are significant in your life. Perhaps you're just out for a round of golf, and the moment you hit the ball and watch it fly away in a perfectly straight line, you realize that's exactly how your life as a writer would look like as well. Lesson 1, begin by compiling a list of significant events from your life to help you discover your true calling. Jeff doesn't mince words when it comes to his opinions. Finding one's life's purpose is not an easy task. If it were, everyone would do it, and we wouldn't have to think about the sobering fact that only 13% of all people around the world enjoy going to work. However, he immediately provides you with some excellent starting points. First and foremost, it is a matter of awareness, specifically self-awareness, that is essential. It is possible that you will miss your life's calling even if it is right in front of you if you do not know yourself well enough. Our true purpose frequently comes to us in the form of a strong gut feeling or during a significant event in our lives, such as a life-changing event such as a turning point. Think of it as a cross between Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's how he discovered he had to train to become a Jedi. Jeff recommends that you begin by making a simple list of all of the significant events in your life. It should be noted, however, that major does not imply importance. Yes, the day you started high school should be included as should graduation and possibly your first kiss, but some events may appear to be completely unrelated, even if you believe they are significant in your life. Perhaps you're just out for a round of golf, and the moment you hit the ball and watch it fly away in a perfectly straight line, you realize that's exactly how your life as a writer would look like as well. After you've gone through the list, ask yourself, when was the last time I was truly happy? When was the last time I felt completely satisfied? What was it that gave me a sense of accomplishment? These are the moments where your calling is hidden, so go out and find them. After you've gone through the list, ask yourself, when was the last time I was truly happy? When was the last time I felt completely satisfied? What was it that gave me a sense of accomplishment? These are the moments where your calling is hidden, so go out and find them. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.